How to Woo Your Lady in Nine Simple Steps. Step 5, Chapter 6. Your mare is beautiful. Perfect, even. You would like nothing more than to gaze lovingly at her, compliment her making amazing traits, take long walks with her, have lighthearted conversations with her, make her laugh. But today, you'll do none of those things. Today, all interactions are off limits. Sounds harsh? Just wait. Step 5 is all about ignoring your mare on a day you'll be around her constantly. Trying this step on a day your mare is not around would defeat its purpose. The ultimate goal of Step 5 is to get your mare to notice the absence of your attentions. So far, you've built up a friendship with her, and after Step 4, have indicated romantic intentions. By now, your mare has likely picked up on your interest in her, at least entertaining the possibility of your feelings. You must not allow her to feel too secure in these assumptions. It is critical that your mare be forced to reconsider her life without your affections. In so doing, she will realize how upsetting it would be for you to disappear. You don't know what it's like until it's gone. As the saying goes, it's time for your mare to confront her own feelings. Previous steps have all worked to build you into your mare's life. Now you must remove yourself from her. Scare her, brave stallion. Ignore her. And if at all possible, favor somebody else. It's just for one day. And trust me, that this one day will change everything. Yeah, it could also make you look like a complete and utter jerk. I warn you, Spike, this step does not sound good. I can't do this. Spike's first words as he sat up in the bed the next morning. His eyes were wide open with bloodshot and rubbed at them roughly. Can't do what? Twilight asked sleepily from her own bed. Nothing, Spike said. As he climbed to his feet and darted down to the kitchen before Twilight could repeat her question. Spoon Fox is crazy, Spike mumbled to himself, getting out bowls for breakfast. I'll never be able to do this. Ignore Rarity, make her feel bad, all day? Spike's stomach swirled sickeningly fast at the thought, and had to steady himself on the wall for a moment. Probably better just to skip the loop loop rice today. Your stomach's already acting up, Spike noted to himself, forcing down a swallow. There was no getting around it. He hated the entire idea of Step 5, but he couldn't ignore Spoon Fox's logic. Where he might just be used to all his attentions. If he took him away, maybe he would get her to wake up and realize how much she needed him. She does need me, doesn't she? Spike's hand began to jitter, and he quickly set the bowls down on the table and stopped them from knocking into each other. What if she doesn't need me? As if the prospect of spending a day being rude to Rarity wasn't enough. What if I do all this and it doesn't even matter? What if Rarity doesn't care that I'm ignoring her? Oh, Celestia, I can't, 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 Spike moaned, covering his face with his hands and sinking to a floor. Can't what? That's why I asked for behind him. Spike shot to his feet. Nothing! He repeated, glancing about to try to find another place to dart to. Spike was faster. Twilight was faster, though. A horn began to glow. Spike found he couldn't move his feet. Looking down, both his feet glowed against the floor. You trapped me! Spike accused. Yes, I did. Didn't I? Twilight said wryly. He said, you didn't seem to want to tell me what's going on. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess your panic this morning has something to do with Rarity. Am I right? Spike was about to object, but realized it'd be useless. Twilight knew him way too well. He sighed. Yeah, you're right, as usual. Do you want to talk about it? Twilight really spiked for her spell, which he knew was her way of giving him a choice. He wriggled his toes and thought for a moment about taking it off again. Looking over at his sister, who sat patiently at his side, he fiercely decided against it. All right, sure, yeah, he said, climbing up his kitchen stool. Twilight gave him a moment to collect himself. So, Spike began, after several moments of kicking his feet back and forth awkwardly. Basically, I'm scared, Twilight. I'm supposed to do step five today at the fair, but I just don't know if I can. Ugh! Step five? Twilight began gagging. Isn't that the step I told you to skip? The one where you need to be mean to Rarity, isn't it? Not mean, really, Spike explained. Just, I need to ignore her. It's supposed to make her think about our relationship. I realize she would be sad if we weren't together, or something like that. Spike, Twilight said, putting a hoof on his arm. I don't want to say this, but please don't do what the book says. I read that chapter. It's ridiculous. 
I have no idea what the author was thinking when he wrote it. But being a stallion, he probably just doesn't understand mares the way he thinks he does. Trust me, I am a mare, and I am telling you, skip step five. Seriously. Psh, trust me, I want to, but I can't. Yes, you can. No, I can't, Twilight, Spike growled. Does he see? This will be the step that will get Rarity to realize she likes me. Hopefully, Spike gulped. And even if I want to, I can't skip it. Not if I want a chance with her. Twice sighed. <sighs> Is there anything I could say to get you to change your mind? Nothing. I'm with Twilight on this, Spike. To uh, quote one of my favorite cartoons, you'll be sorry. Now remember, Sweetie Pat. Meredith says she walks with her sister towards the annual Fun Times for Friendship Fair. Not a word about Spike's feelings to any pony. His feelings are his own to share with whomever he wishes, and not for some filly to spread around town. I know, Sweet Belle answered, rolling her eyes. You've only told me like a hundred zillion times. The fairgrounds loomed on the horizon, and the two sisters made their way towards them. Rarity continued talking. I mean, just because he's so desperately taken with me, that it's impossible for him to hide it, even in front of others, does not give you or any pony else the right to gossip about it. Uh-huh. Sleebell said. They could see the individual tents and stands now. The smell of fresh popcorn wafted towards them. Spike being head over heels with me is a secret to understand. I know it's fun to guess about things, but... Sleebell stepped one huff. Mary, I get it, okay? The older unicorn stumbled slightly. Uh, right, Rarity said. She could feel a blush coming on, and she turned away from her sister, before Sleebell could see her red cheeks. As Stacey knew was her sister starting in on the questions again. Especially says Rarity wasn't sure how to answer any of them. One thing Rarity was sure of today was going to be a much better day than she had lately. First time in ages, Rarity had a prance in her step. A free of confidence had risen in her, ever since the events of the nights before. After Sweet Belle had left, Rarity had carefully taken the rose from outside and put it in a small vase by her bed. When she opened her eyes in this morning, the sight of it made her grin. Fat. She had to stand in front of her mirror and squilts her mouth a bit to stop the grinning. After all, there was absolutely no way she could ever go out in public with such a goofy expression. Look, you're speaking now! Sleep Bell pointed out. The goofy grin on her threatened to plaster herself all over her face once more. And horrified, Rarity squashed her hoof to her cheek to stop it. A fitty! There the eyes. So lightly lower her hoof once she, her expression had come under control. Right over here! Bring the entrance! Sleep Bell said. Rarity glanced over casually. Sure enough, there her little dragon was, standing next to Twilight at Fluttershy. She believed finally in his direction. It's so nice of Spock to do all that for me last night. I guess I owe it to him to pay him a little bit of attention to more than usual today. Sweetie Bell! Rarity stopped surprised as Apple Bloom raced over, near upon his radio to him. Rainbow Jack says he has to work all night. It's good little sense he only go on the rise that Rainbow Dance goes on. I will go on the Toro World Challenge, and I'm the partner. Rady's eyes bugged out on all the yelling. How does Applejack put up with it? Well, here, Apple Bloom, Sleep Bell said. Calm down, I'll go on the Twin World Challenge with you. You will you? Apple Bloom's face broke into a smile of relief. Of course, Sleep Bell squeaked. Yes, if Rady doesn't mind. You, you mind, Rady? Sleep Bell turned to look up at her sister. I know earlier I said I'd ride it with you. Oh, it's perfectly all right, Rady smiled. You two have fun, <laughs> so I can find somebody else to ride with me. Oh, what about Spike? Sleep Bell suggested brightly. Rarity narrowed her eyes at her sister. Sleep Bell bogged up a policy ugly. I mean, or somebody else? No need to do pick Spike in particular. Sleep Bell trailed off awkwardly. Indeed, Rarity said, giving her sister one final glaze of silence. The little unicorn gulped. So, uh, Applebloom, you ready to go? Sir, I am. Applebloom jumped up. <laughs> Sleep Bell yelled, and the two of them raced away together. Rarity shook her head at her teen sister. Find the way to keep them off shut, Sweetie Bell. You're lucky it was just Apple Bloom, and not some funny older who might pick up on things. As much as her sister's near outburst made Rarity cringe, she had to admit, asking Spike to go on the Twin Twirl Challenge might be a good idea. It'd be a nice way to say thanks for all his troubles with her gardening. And maybe after they rode the Twin Twirl Challenge, they could go on the rocketing airship, under your pony palace. After all, the fun times for Friendship Fair was about doing things together. Always needed at least one partner for all activities. 
and this sweetie bear is partnering up with Hopper Bloom. I'll need a partner of my own. Verity allowed for a tiny smug smile. Well, Spike, be pleased when I ask him. She trotted over. Good morning, Fluttershy. Good morning, Twilight. Good morning, Spike. Verity greeted all of them in a large fairgrounds map. Hello, Verity, Twilight said, barely casting a glance in her direction. The purple unicorn was studying the map like it held the secret to life, scrutinizing its every detail. We've just got about our game plan figured out for today. Oh, yes, Fluttershy agreed. Twilight's come with a very nice schedule for a visit to the fair. Rarity laughed a little. <laughs> of course she has. As amusing as Twilight's neuroticism was, Rarity found herself looking at the dragon next to the map. Spike, how are you doing well this morning? Huh? Spike blinked, glancing at Rarity only for a moment, before looking back at the map with Twilight. Yes, you're fine. Rarity frowned a bit. You're certain about that? She asked, stepping forward concerned. Yeah. The dragon said nothing else. Oh! Rarity bit her lower lip, eyes directing to the side. Is he okay? Why would he look at me? She shook her head. Probably just studying the map, in case Twilight gave him some sort of pop quiz later. Twilight really need to give Spike more time off. The dragon could use some free time in his life. Time to do things he wanted to do. Time for fun. Rarity straightened her shoulders. She could provide that. A smile played on her lips. Spike, I was wondering, you see, she just went off with the upper room to ride the Twin Twelve Challenge. She is going to be my partner for the ride, but now I don't have any pony to ride with. Would you like to be my partner? No thanks. What? Really? Verdi asked, touching her child slightly to make sure her hand just fallen to the ground. Then maybe another ride? She tried. No. No? Verdi danced nervously, unable to keep her legs still. But why not? For some reason, Twilight let out a giant exasperated sigh, and Rarity forced herself back under control before Twilight, or Fluttershy for that matter, picked up on her distress. Don't feel like it, Spike shrugged. Besides, I'm going to spend the day with Twilight. She's my partner for the rides. Oh no, Twilight shook her head. You are not dragging me into this. For the first time that morning, Spike, Rarity saw Spike express some emotion. Twilight, the dragon said, his voice squeaking in higher panic. You've got to help me out here. Rarity watched the exchange in absolute puzzlement. What in the name of Celestia is going on? Nope, no way, no how. Twilight walked away, magically removing the dragon from her ankle. Well, it was dragging behind her. You dug that hole for yourself. You figure it out. I'll have no part in it. Twilight! Spike yelled, his eyes growing larger the farther away the unicorn got from them. Spike! Rarity took a tentative step towards the dragon. Is there something wrong? Something I can help with? Uh, uh, no! Spike spun around quickly. Because Fluttershy's going to be my partner for the Twin Twirl Challenge. He grabbed at the yellow pegasus. As Fluttershy's turned to have white eyes. I am? She asked nervously. But I don't like the fast rides. You'll be fine, Spike said. Come on, please. Spike pulled at her side. Fluttershy couldn't get out of his grip, no matter how fast he spun her feet backwards. Spike, what are you? Then he started. Please, Fluttershy? Spike begged. Apparently his tone was pitiful enough that Fluttershy decided to comply. Oh, okay then. If it really means that much to you. Thank you! Spike said, not seeing how so fast that Fluttershy was forced to catch up. Sir, Sorry, Rarity! She called over her shoulder as she followed the dragon to the Twin Twirl Challenge. Rarity stood dumbfounded and all alone at the fair's entrance. <sighs> Spike... Do you know the problem with, Slitos, with Sl Smooth Fox's plan? What's to stop some random guy coming out of nowhere, seeing the lone and despondent Rarity, and taking her on the rise with him? At that point, a cat in a very nice trench coat came up. Hi there, level unicorn. My name is Capper. How are you doing? You see? <laughs> Fluttershy screamed as the Twin Twirl Challenge spun them around faster and faster. Okay, and so I didn't feel guilty enough before. Spice Constance pelted him with imaginary, sharp pointed rocks. The ride probably was a lot of fun, but between Fluttershy's screams and absolute panic, and the look he saw in Rarity's face just before he ran away, there was no way for Spike to even begin enjoying it. As soon as it was done, he quickly ushered Fluttershy far away from the Twin Twirl Challenge, patting her in the back. 
I'm sorry, Flash. I, I really am. It's right, Grimace. I won't make you do that again, or any other ride. It's, it's okay. Flash said sickly. No, it's not. Spike sighed. I was being selfish. Come on, let's do something else. What would you like to do? Me? Flash I asked meekly. Oh, I'll show whatever you want to do is fine. Spike stared at her. I want to ride the scary rides. This is fine for you. Flash skip fell silent, scratching one hoof along with the ground shyly. How about the petting zoo? Spike suggested. First I perked up. Oh yes, that would be wonderful. That is, if it's okay with you. Sounds great to me, Spike said, doing his best to look excited. The two of them began walking to the side of the fairgrounds, past several concession areas and a few of the full rides. Careful now, Basil P. G careful, watch your hoof when he sets the right door. Keep your wings inside the apple. Spike overheard one of them worried by herself as a young colt climbed to the giant wheeled apple on his extremely tame roller coaster track. Other equally large fruits trailed behind the apple, to the side, except Spike wanted to make a joke by overparenting but realized Fireside would probably side with the mother. He just his way through some split peanuts. Fireside was nice, but what did he give her to spending the day with Rarity instead? A sentiment, Spike? Yes. It's just one day. But come, mister, you can do this! But his air voice of courage wasn't loud enough to win inside the dragon. With every step he took, his heart sank further. Worse, he couldn't stop himself from glancing over his shoulder at every other minute. It had to be the nerves. But he just couldn't see the feeling Rarity was following him. When he wasn't glancing at his shoulder, he swear he could see her up just ahead, past the next bend, or behind an oncoming tent, anywhere really. But it always turned out to be somebody else. Or in one embarrassing case, a concession stand with a white sign and berry cream cotton candy on the front. You're crazy, Spike said to himself. What did you say? Nothing, <sighs> Spike sighed. Oh look, it's a whole pen of guinea pigs. Fireside I squealed as he reached the petting zoo. Spike looked in the right since he was pointing, and his face blonde. There stood Slee Bell and Apple Bloom, each holding a guinea pig and looking back at their flanks as they were going to get some rodent petting cutie mark. He couldn't go near them, especially not Slee Bell. Not today. Well, Verity showed up. You're not supposed to avoid Verity, remember? You're supposed to ignore her. Spike's air voice told her to shut up. Uh. Why don't you go on ahead, Fluttershy? Spike suggested. I'm going to see what kind of food you got around here. Are you sure? Fluttershy asked. You missed out on the cookies, the cookies part of the fair. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Spike said. Don't worry about me. Okay, then. Fluttershy replied softly. But she couldn't hide her excitement any longer. And a moment later, she squeed, darting towards the gunning pigs. Spike watched her go, to let out a sigh of relief. No need to go anywhere near Sweet Bell now. He turned and began his trek towards the concession booths. Well, hiya, Spike! Spike stumbled to a halt. Tiki Pie! Yeah, spinning around. Where is he? Over here! Spike looked to his right. Tiki Pie waved from a long row of baked goods. She had half a cake stuck to the side of her face. Do you want to buy a cake? She asked excitedly. I'm helping Mr. and Mrs. Cake sell the trees today while they're going around the fair with the twins. I think I would love to buy a pie. Called another voice from the ground the line. Spike looked up the road consensus booths, and right next to the Sugar corner stand was the Apple Family stand, with row after row of pie slices, caramel slice apples, candied apples, and apple tarts. Apple sacks stood behind it all, counting the coins in a large change box. But if Spike doesn't be a buy a cake, I still wouldn't have sold anything, Pinkie Pie pouted. But even if you didn't always have your face stuffed with food when the customers came by, you'll make some sales by now, Apple Sack pointed out. Spike couldn't help but laugh at the pair of them. How about if I buy a piece of cake and a piece of pie? He star offered. I'm starving! Goof! <coughs> Pinkie Pie bounced up, half the cake sliding off her face, and hit the ground with a splat. Spike walked over to their stands and tried to decide exactly what he wanted to purchase. There were plenty of tasty looking options, but his decision was interrupted. Oh, look, there's Rarity! Applejack noted. Best sleeping and dressed in a slice of pie. Rarity! Spike peeled. Where? He spun around and caught sight of her. Wow, she was beautiful when the sunlight caught her mane just right. And that brought the panic. Hide me! What? Pinkie Pie asked. This is Spike drove over the top of the cake stand to carry between the two ponies. Apple Sack stared down at him. And what, may I ask, what are you doing? Decide me! I can't be around here with you right now! Spike explained in a hushed tone. Spike, step five, buddy! Come on! You're just cheating now! 
Ooh, are you playing hide and seek? I'm not that game. Spike, yeah, play your part, yes, the place. Don't worry, Spike, we got you covered. So he threw general signs of rags of cupcakes over him. It was buried under a mountain of baked goods. Holy gate, I don't think Spike's playing a game. Shh, you need to look at you. What, Polly Gay? Shh! As annoying as Pinky could be, as sticky as Spike felt covered in cupcake frosting, in that moment, he was eternally grateful to the silly pink pony. Where do you want Spike nosedive over a buff of cake, landing between Pinkie Pie and Applejack? She sighed, dragging her hooves. After wandering aimlessly for most of the morning, her summer grumbles had brought her to the contestant stands. Seeing Spike there had given her a brief moment of hope, but his reaction to her was all too telling. He was avoiding her because he was mad at her, and it was all her fault. Randy could scarcely believe. She'd been so foolish. Of course Spike wouldn't want to spend time with her, not that the way she treated him the day before, yelling at him to get out, to leave her alone. Hardly a lady like Chester on her park. All the weeding and rearranging of flowers last night must have meant something though, right? Randy's fretting came to a moment in Harry paused, as he watched Spike allow himself to be covered in cupcakes. Ugh, the mess. She said, Wait, a sudden thought struck her. Well, last night was Spike's way of sending out his feelings, in order to say goodbye to them. One fine grand Chester. Rarity sucked in a breath. It couldn't be true, could it? Was Spike really that upset that he finally threw in the towel, given up on her? And now, he'd gone to other ponies for help? Not her. Piggy Pie and Applejack. Rarity narrowed her eyes. She still couldn't trust the orange pony, not around her Spike. Her eye twitched slightly. Very dear, when in the world did you start calling him your Spike? Oh dear, she was in trouble now. Rarity took an even deeper death than before. Now calm down, Rarity. It's okay to care about Spike. He is your friend, after all. Completely understandable that you're upset at the idea of him being angry with you and taking your friendship elsewhere. Now you just need to earn it back. She so straightened up. Look at her nose high. The story to Applejack stand. Hello, Applejack. Pinkie Pie. She so nodded towards the pink pony. I was wondering if either of you had, uh, um, seen Spike lately. Nope! Pinkie Pie said loudly. No, no, no. Really? Lady Arson and I brought her. Not at all. Well, oh, I actually. Applejack sorry, But then Pinkie Pie sold a cupcake in the cow ponies mouth. Woo! Not. At. All. Pinkie glared at Applejack. Bucking one eye out towards her. Woo! <laughs> Applejack said through a mouthful of cupcake. Sorry, Manny! Pinky smiled brightly. No, Spike, me. You sure? Rarity asked. She gave to her very last, best, but unimpressed stare. Pinky nodded. Yep! If you want to buy a cake, you're looking to see. But if not, I guess you better be moving along now. Lots of fair to see. Rarity sighed. Unless she wanted to get her hose dirty and stig Spike out his pile of cupcakes herself, it didn't look like she was going to get a chance to talk to him here. She eyed the cupcake warily. Icing drifted off of it in large splotches onto the dirt ground. Her upper lip wrinkled. Nope, it just wasn't going to happen. All right, Rarity said slowly, looking back and forth between the two ponies. I apologize for wasting your time. Unicorn turned and walked away with as much dignity as he could muster. Come back when you like cooking! Pinkie Pie called, speculated out a sigh of relief from underneath the cupcakes. Rarity must have left. Ptoy! Applejack spit something large out of her mouth. Play it, pal. What was that all about? You know, silly, we're hiding Spike. Pinkie Pie said, swimming a hose straight into the cupcake mountain and yanking Spike out. Yep! Spike wiped his hands all over himself, knocking out chunks of cake and frosting. He remained sitting on the ground, but below the height of the table, just in case Rarity came back. But Rarity looked like she was really starting to need him. Applejack said, frowning. Spike, don't you dare try to tell me you were just playing a game like Pinkie said. Spike said, looked up at Applejack and winced. It was it? I didn't think so. Applejack replied. Spike sighed. I guess I can't owe you an explanation, huh? Are you allowed to give me one that by an ass? Applejack said, sitting down. Business is slow anyway. Oh, Spike, are you going to tell her? Apple Pinkie Pie slid a huff over her own mouth. Yeah, I guess. May as well, Applejack's trustworthy. Applejack, see, the thing is... He took in a deep breath, building his courage. Applejack sat quietly, waiting patiently. Applejack, tr Pinky tried in a place, clutched at her mouth, her cheeks bursting. Bless her sugar field heart. She can't keep it secret, can she? Spike vowed to bake Pinky with some pie and some cookies later. Meantime, Applejack was laying an explanation. No use to pointing it off. 
Spike X yelled. I, I like Rarity, as in like-like. Yes! Pinkie Pie squealed, leaping up in the air. He told me ages ago! She danced around proudly. Spike wasn't interested in Pinkie Pie's antics at the moment. I am. He was more concerned about what Applejack was going to say. You like Rarity. Apple Jack asked. Yeah? Spike replaced, chasing a lion of frosting, sitting next to him in the dirt. Uh huh. Apple Jack said after a moment's pause. Well, no fight, Sugar Cube. But I can't say I'm too surprised to hear her like What? Spike shot to his feet. Did Twilight tell you? Oh, I'll get her. Apple Jack laughed. <laughs> well, no, it's just something I sort of figure out, my own. Spike's expression fell. Oh, isn't that obvious? No, no! Pinkie Pie said, I was completely shocked when you told me, remember? At first you were like, I got a cousin rarity. And then I was like, what? No! I just can't wait, you crying easily. I did, I did! Spike looked up impressively with Pinkie Pie. I know you did, and thanks for that. What I don't understand, Applejack continued, is why you were trying to hide from rarity. Oh, that! Spike said, scratching the back of his head. I started trying to, well, you see. You can feel his face flushing. I'm following some advice from some pony. Steps. If I follow the steps, I'm guaranteed to win Rarity over. Pinkie Pie 9, that'll like you. I knew about this too. I was acting on convinced. Steps? Yeah, from from a book. Spike admitted. I am one of those steps I just had it from Rarity. Spike smiled sheepishly. Well, one of the steps is ignoring Rarity. Just for one day. He added quickly. Sample Sex Express and turned to the more appalled. No, it doesn't sound nice, but I have to do it. Even if Twilight does want me to skip it. What? Well, let me get this right. Applejack said, I narrowing one eye at Spike. Twilight wants you to skip a step. Spike nodded. Yeah, it's really annoying. Sir Cleo, Applejack shook her head slightly. If Twilight's telling you to skip a step in a book, maybe you should consider skipping the step? I can't, Spike said. The fence is rising up around him once more. I've got to do what Smooth Sox says. There's no way a lame little dragon like me will have any chance of winning Rarity on my own. What about asking your friends for help, Diane? Applejack suggested. Spike hesitated before responding. He hadn't really thought about asking anyone other than Twilight for help. Yeah. Pinkie Pie pouncing in place. We can help. We'll make sure every other step of that old book works. Wait, really? Spike turned to Pinkie. It's not exactly well, my Applejack tried to interject. Don't be silly, Applejack! We just have to help Spike get the steps right! And then cause your Uncle Sammy's your aunt- Poof! Wedding bells! Piggy squealed. W w wedding day bells! Spike sighs wide and took a step backwards. Let's not get carried away here! I don't even know if Verity likes me that way yet! Okay, fine. Dating bells! Piggy corrected herself. Then she put one hook to her chin. Does anybody know what dating bells sound like? Do you think it sounds like doorbells? I'll have no idea. Applejack shook her head. And I also don't know if I like where Drizzle's head. But please, Applejack! Spike begged. I can use all the help I can get! Applejack looked down at him and sighed. <sighs> if I must. Rarity sat outside the fairgrounds, waiting for the day to just be over already. Why couldn't Sleep Bell hurry up and come to their meeting spot? Give her a reason to stop brooding. Till then, Rarity was left with her thoughts. So, Spike hates, hates me now. At least he's decided to quit liking me. So he was certain that much. Her difference of cruelty finally did her right. It's the right to Applejack! There wasn't any proof of it, but Rarity bristled the idea of sp spending the rest of his day with the Earth Pony. All the fires from the night before, they meant nothing to him now. Not like he did to her. He said his goodbyes and moved on. The only conclusion she could draw. A few tiny voices in her mind tried to point out that she was making a lot of substance. Rarity smothered those quickly under a heavy blanket of dramatic woe. Sun had dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows along the ground. Rarity fought back tears as she watched. Rarely, we need to talk. Rarity turned to the sound of the voice to see Twilight behind her. Don't just why not? I don't want to surprise! Rarity said, blinking quickly, as if any straight tears away. Twilight sat down next to Rarity, also the disappearing rays of sunlight. I want to apologize for any of Spike's weirdness today, she said. He, uh, hasn't been himself lately. As you may have noticed. Rarity let out a short laugh. <laughs> so you've noticed. Twilight concluded. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm afraid you may have picked up some of my more anal tendencies. He's insisting on doing something in a very particular order. And I'm afraid it might be hurting you. Rarity sniffed. What do you mean? In what sense? She glanced at Twilight at the corner of her eye. 
The purple mare just stared at her. At the moment, was staring. Rarity's shoulder slumped. Okay, so what if it has been? Twilight put a hoof on Rarity's shoulder. I don't know what to do about it anymore, actually. I just wanted to let you know that however it may seem, you're still important to Spike. He cares a lot about you. Tears from earlier sprung back to Rarity's eyes, completely unbidden. He does! Spike, Twilight watched her carefully. Yes, he does. And I have a question for you. How do you feel about Spike? Rarity stood up quickly. Well, that's a silly question. I do care for him, too, of course. He is a great friend. Friend, though, right? Twilight asked. Rarity bent up slightly. Uh, yes, why are you asking? Twilight nodded. Just sorting things out. If that is much. Rarity sat back. And so, what exactly what Spike doing? Why is he acting so odd? Twilight put a foot in front of her face of grass. I can't say. It's a promise I made. I can't say it's something very dumb. He's hurting you right now. He knows. He's actually doing it on purpose. He's what? On purpose? Yeah, it's silly, really. Twilight continued. We'll probably get a good laugh out of it later. But right now, I'm afraid he's being a bit of an adult. He's hunting me. On purpose. Very clarified. I can't tell you why, Twilight said. I wish I could. I could make all this easier. Rarity stared straight forward. She could feel the ice creeping over her heart. Thank you for the talk, Twilight. Rarity said calmly. No problem, Twilight smiled. Anytime, glad to help. She got up and went back towards the fairgrounds. I'll still swing you bell if I can track her down. That would be lovely, Rarity replied, continuing staring to the west. The sunlight was gone now. A darkness had taken over the sky.